Coming up are the diagnoses for the 10 cases of prostate cancer and mimics of prostate cancer. The first case was a TURP specimen from a male of 80 with a history of prostatism. And this is a good example of typical basal cell hyperplasia. The lesion has a rather primitive appearance resembling fetal prostatic acini. The basal cell layer is two or more cells thick. The nuclei are ovoid and the nucleoli are inconspicuous. The different patterns include nests of basal cells, solid or cystic sheets of basal cells, and some may have a cribriform appearance. Immunocharacteristics include S100, PSA, HUD4 beta E12, NSC and chromogranin positivity. You can see at this low power image how the lesion resembles fetal prostatic acini. This higher power field shows the cribriform pattern and nests of basal cells. And at a high magnification you can see the ovoid, rather bland nuclei and inconspicuous nucleoli. And again, this nice cribriform pattern. The second case was a chap of 76 who had a TURP for suspected BPH. The diagnosis here is adenoid cystic carcinoma, and this is a variant of basal cell carcinoma. Grossly, the tumour has a fleshy white appearance. It occurs in the transition zone, and there are nests of basaloid cells with punched out lumens. These are aggressive tumours with frequent perineural invasion. Immuno includes positivity for A1A3, P63, and 34-beta E12. On low power you can see nests of basaloid cells of varying sizes. On higher power there is a clear cribriform pattern with punched out lumens. And here you can see a rather more lacy cribriform pattern resembling adenoid cystic carcinomas at any other location. The third case was a male of 87 who had a TURP, no other clinical details available. This is an example of cribriform hyperplasia. This occurs in the transition zone. It is composed of uniform cells with clear cytoplasm and they have a sieve-like pattern and there is no nuclear or nucleolar enlargement. This is a low power view can see the rather regular architecture of the lesion. Higher power you can see the cribriform nests of cells. Here you can appreciate the sieve-like pattern of the lesion. And at the highest power you can appreciate the complete lack of nuclear atypia and lack of nucleolar enlargement. Finally, this is the high molecular weight cytokeratin stain, very nicely demonstrating the basal cells that are fully intact, completely surrounding the island's cells. The clue to the diagnosis in case number four is the history. This was a male of 75 who presented with hematuria and had a fronded lesion in the prostatic urethra at cystoscopy. And this is invasive ductal or endometrioid adenocarcinoma. This tumour typically presents with hematuria frequency and urgency in older men and grossly there is a polypoid or papillary mass in the prostatic urethra and large periurethral ducts. As the name implies, the tumour resembles endometrioid endometrial adenocarcinoma of the uterus. The tumour has a cribriform or papillary pattern with pleomorphic nuclei and frequent mitotic figures, 
in common with the asana adenocarcinomas of the prostate, race maze is positive. And here is the histology of endometrioid adenocarcinoma. The tumour has a papillary and cribriform pattern. And at a high power, you can see the nuclei are pleomorphic and mitotic figures are quite easy to spot. The fifth case was a TRP specimen from a male of 82 with history of prostatism. This is an example of rectal carcinoma infiltrating the prostate. The diagnosis was confirmed by the clinical history with confirmatory positivity for CDX2 and negative prostate markers including PSA and PSAP. This tumour shows the typical features of a rectal adenocarcinoma. Having said that, without bearing in mind the possibility of rectal adenocarcinoma, it could quite easily be confused for a high-grade prostatic adenocarcinoma such as an endometrioid or ductal adenocarcinoma. And it just demonstrates how important it is to step back a little and ask yourself, is this definitely a prostatic primary or could it be a tumour arising from elsewhere? The sixth case was from a male of 62 who had prostate template biopsies with a PSA of 9.6. And one of the cores of prostate contains some seminal vesicle. These are frequently seen in prostatic biopsies. The seminal vesicles have a columnar epithelium arranged in a papillary pattern. The big problem, however, is the cytologic atypia that could cause the unwary to make a false diagnosis of cancer. Reassuring findings are absent mitotic figures and the real clincher to diagnose seminal vesicle is the presence of the golden brown lipofuscin pigment in the cytoplasm. This is a high power view of the seminal vesicle epithelium. You can appreciate the nuclear atypia, but more importantly, you can clearly see the golden lipofuscin pigment in the cytoplasm. Case number seven is an 81-year-old who had a redo TURP for bleeding, and the redo TURP is a clue to the diagnosis. And the diagnosis is nephrogenic metaplasia, also known as nephrogenic adenoma. This is caused by inflammation and trauma, hence the TURP being a bit of a clue. And histologically, it is composed of collections of irregular tubules lined by cuboidal or flattened hobnail cells, and the glandular spaces may contain mucin. If you are allowed only one immunostain to make the diagnosis, the choice would be PAX8, where there is nuclear positivity. PSA and PSAP are, of course, negative. Here you can see collections of acinous structures that vaguely resemble prostatic adenocarcinoma. However, at a higher power, you can see the nuclei are regular, cuboidal and lack atypia. And this is the PAX8 stain clinching the diagnosis of nephrogenic metaplasia or nephrogenic adenoma. Case number eight was a male of 73 who had a TRP with a long history of prostatism. This is a case from many years ago at St James's Hospital in Balham, South London. I noticed one of the chips contained a nodule. I had no clue what it was and sent the slide off to a leading urological pathologist who also hadn't a clue what it was. To cut a long story short, Similar lesions had been previously diagnosed as adenomatoid tumour. This was not an adenomatoid tumour, so I called it a pseudoadenomatoid tumour. But the better term for it is sclerosing adenosis. And this is a condition that can be found in approximately 2% of TRP specimens as an incidental finding. And the lesion is 
characteristically formed of small well-formed acini. The basal cells may be prominent and show positive staining with the S100, a useful stain for clinching the diagnosis. This lesion does indeed resemble adenomatoid tumour. The lesion is composed of well-formed acini and the tumour cells show focal positive staining with PSA, indicating that this is of prostatic origin and not an adenomatoid tumour. Case number 9 was a male of 70 who had prostate template biopsies with a PSA of 9.5 pyrad 3. This is something that one may see occasionally in prostate biopsies and this is an example of cowper glands. These are lobules of small urethral glands with clear cytoplasm and small regular nuclei. The PSA and PSAP stains are negative. And this is a nice example of a lobule of cowper glands with clear cytoplasm, very small regular nuclei. Case number 10 was from a male of 69 who had a TURP. The diagnosis here was an atypical leiomyoma. The nuclei, as the name suggests, show nuclear atypia. There is, however, no necrosis and no increased mitotic activity. The lesion is benign. And here you can see a nodule of smooth muscle cells with pleomorphic, rather atypical nuclei, but no necrosis and no mitotic activity. And this is the actin stain showing positivity, indicating smooth muscle.